So this is the Solanaceae. Uh, so the Solanaceae is a group also in the Eudicots, super important globally and economically. And I, I think it's a very fascinating family, like lots of really crazy stuff happens in the Solanaceae, both yummy and poisonous. So the, the theme for this is kind of like, it's a family of contrasts, right? It includes uh, really different things together. And so evolution has been really fast within this family, producing lots of different um, contrasting traits. So about 2,700 species. The flowers like have a look about them. Like I'm not going to be able to give you a definite rule that says this is a Solanaceae, how a Solanaceae flower looks. Um, but the most important thing is that the petals are connate; they're fused together. But that doesn't. That's true in other families too. But it's often wheel-shaped or tubular or somewhere in between those two. And the other thing is that alkaloids are super common in this family. So they make lots of anti-herbivore defenses. And some of these alkaloids are delicious. And some of them are poisonous to us. So there's this really um, sort of dual aspect to the Solanaceae. And it's really important in Australia, in part because it was a huge part of Aboriginal diet in many places, in many parts of Australia. There are species of Solanaceae that look very similar to each other, some of which are delicious, some of which are poisonous. And knowledge about which ones were good and which ones were bad was a very important part of, of um, traditional, traditional knowledge. Uh, it's usually, Solanaceae usually herbaceous around Sydney, but it can be vines, trees, shrubs, epiphytes, all, all different types of growth forms across the world. Um, the most important genus to know is, is the Solanum genus. So it's the genus that the family is named for. And it's both with lots of native ones around Sydney and lots of weedy ones around Sydney. And sometimes difficult to tell whether it's native or weedy. And you of, often have to use context clues like where you are. If you're in a highly disturbed area, you're likely to find weedy ones. If you're in nice national parks, it's more likely to be a native. Um, and going along with this family of contrast things, it's found in very wet places and also super dry deserts. So as you go out west, there's lots of Solanum, Solanum species. Uh, lots of food stuff. Food. This is a whole box of different Solanum fruits that are yummy. Um, so there's a huge range of different eggplants, peppers, chilies, tomatoes, potatoes, and some, some lots that aren't even shown shown here. So many, and we'll get to this later when we talk about food. Um, this is an important one, and, and this is uh, nicotina, which is the tobacco plant, very common uh, species from North America, which was first domesticated by the Native Americans. And here's the flowers, which are more on the tubular end, but again, see the, the fused petals, but a kind of tubular as opposed to a wheel shape, which you see in the in the tomatoes. Um, here's how it grows. There's the flowers, and this is how you more commonly encounter it around here. Um, so yeah, that lots of alkaloids that have very interesting effects in humans. Uh, this is another species. This is the deadly nightshade. So very tomato-like flowers, but this really deep dark purple, and the berries are actually highly poisonous to humans. So. You have to know your plant identification to know whether to eat a, a Solanaceae, if a, a, a Solanaceae species that you find in the wild. Um, here's kind of lots of botanical illustrations of, of depicted lots of different Solanaceae traits. This is more the the wheel type, wheel type or tomato type of the inflorescence. But you will kind of start to get a look, a feeling for how Solanaceae plants look after you've seen uh, enough of them. And the fruits of the ones that we eat are fleshy, but there's a huge range of different fruit types. But Solanum, which is the most important genus around here, tends to have these more tomato-like berries um, that are, are you, you would recognize as being very similar to tomatoes. But within the family, there is a huge range. Uh, here are a couple of, of local species Again, as it, when you find them out in the desert, they tend to have, be covered in hairs and have this kind of much lighter um, tone, not, not as green. So this is to diffuse the intense radiation that you find out in, 
in in more arid parts of New South Wales, whereas in the wetter environments they tend to look a little bit more like this. But again, the flowers have this tomato-like feeling to them, and then the fruits fruits are berries.